Okay, we're going to uh, call the facilities and finance facilities and operations committee meeting to order. So we will start with the roll call vote, please. Here. Mr. Hemingway? Here. Ms. Deeroff? Present. Mrs. Hogan? Present. Mrs. Denon? Mr. Burton? Here. Ms. Nyman? Here. Mr. Here. And now we all have the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. The flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first up is public comment period number one. Do we have anybody for public comment period? No public comment. Okay. Next up is approval of the February 11th, 2020 Finance Facilities and Operations Committee minutes. So if I could have a motion, Mrs. Hogan, second. Oh, um, <laughs> Mr. Foos, sorry, I'm like I'm drawing a blank, <laughs> Mr. Foos. Um, are there any questions? Minutes from the okay. Mr. Updegrove. Here. We don't for for the committee meetings. We don't need to have the roll call, okay. so we'll just go ahead and and Listen. have a consensus. Yeah. You should, because she wants to make sure they catch a record who's all here. We, uh, we, we had roll so, calls. Right, okay. Minutes. So, um, does any, I'll just say it this way. Does anybody object to the minutes? No objection? Okay. The minutes forward. Agenda is a presentation of the, the um, bids for phase two of the Adam project. Okay, so tonight we have Mr. Clough from KCBA who's going to review the results of the bids that we received, um, I think it was February 26th, is that correct? Um, mm -hmm. um, for, our, for our Adam project. Thank you very much. And we have a couple of visual displays coming here, yes. First of all, I can tell you we're very happy to be one of the first out of the shoot uh, to bid. The bidding climate's pretty tough. There's a lot of work. This year we went to a great deal of effort to make sure that this project was one of the first ones out on the street. We got, except for electrical, we only got two bids. We got three to four bids for all the four prime contracts for the job. So as you may recall, uh, on the board you will see on May 21st, 2019, we all got together in this room and said, okay, what do we think we're looking at with uh, the project. At that point, uh, we had revised it to take into account all the Title I stop, and we had uh, downsized it to take out a lot of the other things out of the master plan so we could get it under control, sort of. And we said as a group we would do the field house at the stadium, we would do the softball, uh, and option A, well, there are many options that were revolving, but the option A option is where the freestanding uh, softball uh, support building that has its own toilets and its own concession in it. That uh, match, matches up for Title IX with the functions that are at Bear Stadium. We had the rain garden. That's part of the necessity of the stormwater. We are uh, increasing the impervious surface ever so slightly. And in 2020, you have to collect more rainwater than you did when we built on this property years ago. So that takes care of that. And we said there's a very big need for a maintenance building. Put all that into the budget, and we said, hey, we should have a design contingency. We hadn't started work at that point, and we had that 5%. And we said, hey, the bidding climate is, you should have something in for that. And Fidavia put in an 8%. So we were looking on bid day for a bid for the project all in of $3,781,987. At the same time, you had also approved the overall budget at the bottom, which included the stuff that was done in phase one last summer, the uh, soft costs that go with both projects, as well as the phase two. So there you see the total budget. 
We go to the next slide. We have very, very good news. We have uh, the four contracts on, the, on this side of the ones that were just bid. To save the district money, you recall, we have these as state contracts. That saved us the contractor markup and uh, profit and overhead on both the softball field lighting as well as the uh, grandstand and press box. The, the grandstand and press box people uh, did the main stadium uh, with us last summer. They're back again. These are competitively bid, but they're competitively bid as a statewide basis. So if we take all those together, and we take the actual budget or the actual awards of the sum total. You have a three million. I can't see across the room. Three million five hundred and seventy-six thousand four hundred eighty. And the good news is, all in with everything the way we need it, we are under budget by two hundred and five thousand five hundred seven dollars. So it's our recommendation to this board that you you need all these things. You are under budget on all these things. We would ask you to uh, move ahead to the next board meeting uh, in two weeks and approve the awards of those contracts. Another little bit of icing on the cake, the electrical contractor is the one we worked with last summer. Fantastic. We have the same mechanical and plumbing contractor as one contract. They were bid separately, but they were the low on both. That makes for better coordination, better workmanship. So. All the planets have aligned. Uh, I have really very little more to say about it. I'll take any questions. Mr. Aftergarden. I thought we had taken the garage off the uh, off the bid. Off we the bid the garage as an alternate, and the alternate price for the garage, what we said was if we could afford it, we should do it. You will be able, as a board, will decide that. The budget for the garage was $863,970. We bid it, and with the four primes, we are at $822,500. So I would recommend strongly. You need it. You should build it. You are under budget with it. I, but it's your choice as a board. So we did have that, and we're not recommending that alternate. It would reduce, it would reduce each of those uh, correspondingly. Mr. Brophy. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Upshaw. Would you go ahead? Yeah, well, we were we were informed when this went already in last year that they were putting this garage up to change oil in the trucks, and I find it hard to believe that we're spending eight hundred and sixty-three thousand or eight hundred forty thousand dollars to change oil in the trucks. Can you explain how that's feasible? I can allow the facilities director to explain what's what's feasible. I believe they're doing more than that, but uh, that would be his discussion with you. Hi. Um, yeah, the garage wasn't just for changing oil. I think that was one of the reasons why we asked to have the garage. Uh, we have no storage space. You're more than welcome to come up to this facility where I work. Down in the basement is our wood shop. It's, uh, it's down in the basement. There's only one exit. It's very difficult to get down there and out not to mention carrying your project down there and out. Uh, we have no storage in the district for anything. We pe keep putting additions up. Small rooms get changed into small classroom instruction rooms, and we're out of space. We have no place to store anything. So the garage will act as a, a garage. We'll have a lift in there to do our own oil changes. But it's also for us to work out of the weather and elements. Um, we have no place to work. I have a question. How many garages do we have in the district besides the ones you want to build? Uh, there's a few. There are a few. But they also house lawnmowers, tractors, and things of that sort for those specific pieces of land and those properties. And you can't have two things in one space at one time. So if I want to store something there, I've now got to take a piece of equipment that I want to last 10, 15, 20 years, put it out in the elements. 
if you're Charlie, if you're looking for a storage facility, why don't you just put up a pole barn for about 150, 175 Chair, you, okay. What's happening is you got okay. to, uh, you okay. know, debate. Somebody else has a okay. question, um, and and then you can come back. But okay, let let me just get to Mr. Brophy's question, and then we can go ahead. Okay, my question is for was is a little different. Uh, I thought we were looking at over seven million the last time we talked about this with the maintenance building in it and we took the maintenance building out of it to get it down. Now we're under seven million and the maintenance building's back in. No, that, uh, that, I'm kind of lost on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, but that was when we had the variants go south on us where they, they allowed it for the variants. The initial estimate uh, was to do the facility with the additional toilets and stalls and everything. We believed it to be a $350,000 upcharge. And that's why I drove it up to the 7.1. But I don't see that in here now. Because we you, took it out. Right. You all asked we for took that it to out. be taken out. What, what, what the, uh, the ba but the bathrooms, I thought we had to do that. There they are in there. They're, they are in, in there. there. But we, you did not improve the increase for the various to be included. But don't we have to include that or they can't finish the bathroom? So no, you, but you sent, it, you sent it out. We, we thought it would be a higher number that we needed. The vote of the board, actually it was your recommendation yeah. to not increase yes. it. So that 350 was actually, your point was don't raise it anymore if I remember correctly. Correct, but we were moving the maintenance building out so we could afford that variance that we have to have. Now I'm seeing the maintenance building back in and the variance isn't in there. So no, no, I'm no, no. We, 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 never, we never talked about moving the maintenance building out. Yes, we no, we did not. We, we always no. talked about putting a maintenance no, building no, in did. as an alternate. No, we, yeah, we moved maintenance building out of this into an alternate yes. and then applied to 350000 for the fair or 300000 No, you had 300000 300, no. no. already dedicated from another uh, proceed if you're talking about that. Is that, that so, so the way I understand it, and hopefully I'm correct here, is that what we went to the board when we discovered the variance was not accepted, we anticipated that the budget would have to go up by $350,000. And you had stated at the meeting um, that you thought that there was enough built into the budget and that you were willing to go forward with the design, but not to increase the budget. Yes. So my understanding, and Mr. Cloth can correct me if I'm wrong, is that we did go forward with the design which included the bathrooms as required and that we did put the, we never took the um, maintenance building out, but it was bid as a negative alternate. Am I saying that correctly? Deduct. A deduct alternate. So that if the costs that were go that were incurred by the design change were going to increase the budget that we would have the option to take the maintenance building out so we a uh, the way i understand it we approved the design to go forward but we did not increase the budget i think we're very fortunate in these budget results that even with the design change required by the variance we were still able to get bids come in that were under our original budget that we did not increase okay that that's well that's my question is the, the this all we're not going to come back in another meeting and say well now we need another three hundred thousand dollars at some point if we approve if we're okay with this the, the total cost with the building is still 6.7 million dollars is that correct correct that is correct that's that's all i the want to hear that's correct, correct. i'm not going to yeah. form yeah. we're included yeah. in this bid yeah. okay. the maintenance building is included in this bid and we picked it up by competition and we picked it up by good estimating mm -hmm. and we got all of it for the number we originally okay so so no other charges then. no other charges. in that case i thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> we worked hard to get there <laughs> thank you very much if i could just add that okay. it's not just the building that we're talking about up there if you look at the plan set behind that building is a rather large retention pond uh, that facility or parcel of land up there has no water water retention whatsoever and so part of our MPDS uh, uh, stormwater. We, we don't have an correct MPDS me if I'm wrong. We don't have a stormwater plan because we don't meet the requirements. We're just under an acre. However, along with the pond down below, the water garden and this pond, we've satisfied the township's 
requirements with both of those ponds, and so we don't have to go out and get an MPDES permit from the state. But that's a so that, that pond, there's some excavation involved with that pond back there that uh, is also part of that maintenance building. And that's all we yes. Yes, it is. Mr. Hemingway, if, if you have a comment or a question, this is the time to... All right. The only, only comment I see is, in, so in the last month or the last meeting, your projections were, from what I'm seeing, close to $550,000 off if you wanted us to approve three hundred and fifty thousand additional dollars because you said we needed to to get toilets and now our projections are coming in below you know two hundred under five hundred and fifty thousand dollars is quite out there to project to us and ask for us to approve an additional three hundred and fifty before to find out that we were five hundred and fifty off target. Unfor you know, fortunately, it's to the good, but you know, for an overall project of six, you know, close to seven million dollars, five hundred and fifty is a pretty decent sized percentage to be off. That's all I have to say. I, I'm very proud of the estimate. I think in this bidding climate, we were prudent to tell the board the worst case scenario. I have always told the board the worst case scenario. The board said we will not accept the worst case scenario. So you did not add 350,000. So we said if it didn't come in, we would take something out. So I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, the work that was done. The good news is the minutes I'll just share. Um, in response to the ex expansion of the scope of phase two, now, the Adam project is presented in January 14th finance facilities and operations meeting. The bid documents will list, it says we'll list in the minutes, the maintenance building as the deduct al alternate. So it was approved by board vote to list it as the deduct. <coughs> this will allow the board of school directors to decide whether to construct the portion of the project when the actual construction costs are shown. So that's what I was just trying to say that it was always supposed to be in the plan, your issue that I remember Mr. Brophy was, one, don't add the, the additional costs, that you believe there was enough money there, and I, I, I at least walk away from the table understanding that if it didn't fit within the money that you all already approved, then something got to go, it got to cut. So that's just the, the, the way I recall it, and I don't, just, a, and, that, and that additional cost was the 350 showing in the minutes. Uh, the budget approved on January 11, 2019, was six million seven hundred thirty-three dollars and four hundred six million seven hundred thirty-three thousand four hundred thirty-seven. The revised budget presented was seven million eighty-three eighty-three thousand four hundred thirty-seven dollars, which means that's the additional cost of three fifty. And the board voted at three fifty down and said you you needed to stick with uh, this bid and and if it, you know that was going to go forward, but then take that out as an alternate so you all could see if it was over, if you wanted to pull that out, which of course what he just said, you can, that's your decision uh, to still do that, uh, but everything worked out, luckily to the good. Go, Mr. Ruffy, go ahead. No, no that's correct. That's correct, it was a negative. You, you've, you've found ways to get, to get all the work done and stay within the budget. At that point, that you followed what we asked at that meeting, so I have, I thank you for that. I have no. We tried very hard. Yeah, I have no uh, negative comments on that. If we're getting, if we're getting everything. We're getting the bathroom extensions that we need, and we're getting the maintenance building and everything else. And you're right. getting everything, and you're saving two hundred. That's 000. which is even better. Thank you. Right. Now, what I do here uh, to Mr. Brophy's concern and question is basically I'm oversimplify it, so don't not defend you. Uh, between because your point was you believe contingency should have been factored in in the front end if it for the variance that we didn't get uh, you believe there was enough contingencies already factored here so the bottom line is work within the budget so as I walk away from this what I'm hearing again is to your question work within the budget and the contingencies don't come back and ask us for no more money okay <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Dira um. Did we work with the uh, construction company before ever? Uh, that name's not familiar to me. 
Yurig is known to uh, Fidavia. Uh, I have not worked with. I work with all the others uh, often. Do they uh, usually come back because they need more money? N no, <laughs> I, uh, they come highly recommended. Uh, we have not had uh, any reports that that's the case. They have, they were obligated to file a uh, qualifi qualification questionnaire. So I don't. I'm glad we're not using the same ones we have before. I've been asking questions about this concession stands, and I still don't have answers. Well, what would you like to hear? Well, I've been asking about the uh, the equipment. Okay, I asked the general contractor <laughs> what it was because we didn't call it out as a separate number, and we'll have his uh, specific uh, schedule of values. But he said it's about ninety-eight thousand dollars. We were, were looking for a hundred, so we made it. We are reusing equipment with, that we're able to. Well, that's what, it, what we're supposed to find out, what we're using, what we're buying, and you're saying we're spending 900, uh, 90, 98,000, and we were authorized for 100. What are we getting? We are getting a uh, new Ansel hood. We are getting additional uh, merchandisers. We are getting the pot sinks that are necessary and the, the health things that are necessary. We are reusing a griddle, which is pretty pricey, and we are reusing a merchandiser. Those two things are being reused. That Whose was, equipment is that? Is that ours, the school districts? <coughs> All the uh, concession equipment belongs to the Music League. And who's going to run these concession stands? The Music League. And who's going to pay everything? Music League. Or we are. That's what I thought. <clears throat> hmm? Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns, to Mr. Eftegar? Yeah, this is this is for Jay. Yes. When you first put this bid in, before you're at the bid now, yes. how many EDUs did you apply for? We did not apply for any because we talked to the township and they said we fall within the EDUs we are using currently. We had that discussion. Our, our civil engineer talked to the township, and it was determined that we do not need any additional EDUs. So you didn't apply for any. You didn't apply for any more EDUs than how many for that building, for the maintenance building? We didn't apply for any because we were told we didn't need any. I have no idea how many EDUs you have. We do not need any more. You're putting up a brand new building. You need an EDU for that, or aren't you going to have toilets in there? Well, sir, the sewer authority that we talked to says we do not. You may do, you can address it with the sewer authority. You, you, you to, 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 to top on that, you must remember you tore down a building that had very inefficient toilets in it. That's part of the issue. The old toilets were very inefficient. Granted, you got a lot more new ones but they're much more water efficient. So that's part of the, the, the discussion that goes back and forth as well. Okay. So um, if there aren't any, uh, okay. if there aren't any other questions or concerns, um, is there anyone who is against moving these, this bid and this forward for a vote at the voting meeting? Okay, seeing none, we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. The next item is the 2021 Berks Career and Technology Center budget, and we do need a decision as to whether or not to move this forward. Um, everyone, I believe, has a hard copy um, at their place, and then there is a copy on the uh, on your computer. Thank you. So this is an annual um, approval that we need to do. Um, since this is a joint venture um, and the budget was in your it, it was part of the um, content of the agenda and just today we did receive those hard copies which are at your place um, and just so everyone will know the way we are charged for the BCTC is a three-year average of our attendance and it is not dependent just on our students but it is also dependent on how many students the other school districts that are part of BCTC so it is a basically a three-year average of our attendance at the BCTC and you can see that our this is a set amount um, it is based on our th last three years, so the amount that you see for the operating fund budget, budget 
is what we are going to be paying. Um, the special ed area is based on students that we do have attending the BCTC. Um, their estimate was six. That was based on what we had uh, attending this year. There are two programs, and Mrs. Torsha can correct me if I get this wrong. I learned an awful lot about BCTC and special needs um, when I was asking um, about this item. Um, so um, we have two programs, basically. For ninth graders, it is a program for any ninth grader with an IEP that they can attend. Um, students who are in um, the 10th through 12th grade, and I get the term wrong, it is, I want to call it special, but that's not, it's service occupation. Service occupation. So um, right now we have two ninth graders that are going and four uh, students who are attending the service occupation. And a, a lot of the times, just because you have an IEP does not mean that you need to be in the service occupation program. So um, those ninth graders may be going into the part that is covered by the general operating budget. So, um, and I did talk with our transition coordinator and she made an estimate she actually thought that next year um, one of those four students that we have um, there now will be graduating she did not think that we would have any additional students in the special um, uh, occupant uh, occupation program i'm sorry about that and um she really thought we would have three um, when i adjusted the budget i adjusted it for four just in case we would have an additional student attending that program so that's some information about how that works and I would just ask, uh, Mr. Uptgrove, as the representative and someone who's had a tour, do you have any um, anything that you'd like to add? It was fantastic. I went through the buildings, and, and they're fantastic. I went there back in the in the 60s, and, uh, man, today it's, like, unbelievable what they do there. And those kids are going to have a great future in front of them coming out of there. Thank you. Okay, so um, is there any, does anyone have any? problem with moving this forward no okay great so we can move that forward to our voting meeting as well moving on we have our lawn care RFP results and we're going to be discussing that next so um, Mr. Drescher will come forward and discuss. We just got these proposals um, last Friday, um, and we're still really looking at them. Um, we will be making a recommendation through the newsletter, um, and we did have um, a question about whether we can address quality in addition to price with an RFP, and I did ask the solicitor to review that today, and he did say that we can do that. So I'll let um, Mr. Drescher maybe talk a little bit about the history and what we're, we're considering. Good evening. Um, I put this uh, RFP out. It, it was a bid the last time it went out, and I changed it to an RFP <clears throat> to give us a little more latitude. Um, we put it out there to the uh, previous land care folks, uh, land care was the name of their company, uh, as well as four other um, companies. They're kind of all over the place with the exception of three. Uh, the three lowest numbers are pretty consistent. Um, we have uh, one that's off the charts. I've called each company to make sure that their numbers were accurate and that they understood the way we were looking for the numbers. And everybody's pretty even with their numbers and the way they played them out. The problem I'm having right now is, is uh, I wasn't here for the three previous years when the land care was here. And so I have to go by what I hear from the properties that were taken care of by them and the individuals that either reside there or have to work side by side with them being my grounds folks. So there is some questions about quality of work, um, ability to have a conversation with individuals. Uh, and so I'm not 100% confident in who, who our choice is going to be. Obviously, you know, cost is, is a major, major thing for me, but it's not always the best thing. And so I'm not, I'm not ready at this point to make a decision on this is what, where I'm at. But if anybody has any questions about how we, how I put the, the RFP out there for pricing and why I did it the way I did it, uh, please ask away. So 
I, are you when you say you're not ready to make a decision? Are you saying you're not ready to 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 give a recommendation on which yes. bid we should take, or yes. you're or you're not, or you're thinking of tanking the whole proposal? I'm I'm not ready to make a recommendation. You're not ready to make a recommendation out of this group, right? Okay. So what I'm hearing from you is that land care was who we were using. Yes. And because you weren't here you right. had talked to some people and you didn't exactly get rave reviews no i did not and and based on the few people i've talked to i think it i think it behooves me to talk to some other individuals okay. just just to get a, a, a full I, I don't want to make a snap snap decision here and regret it okay you, you can't, can't get either. I, I have them on mine. That's well, weird. I, I have them on mine. Like yeah, you don't. You can't. Oh, that's weird. <coughs> really? You have to log into your own. You have to log your own. To your own board box. I think so that's why. Yeah. You. I think that's the. I, I think for. I think for some of the newer board members, I think the issue that we're having is that. Right. You. You had it. At. Yeah. I think when. When. Yeah, I think I think that's I think that's the issue. You can see it at home. Today, tonight, you did. Okay. Could you just put it up? Is it times out? Like it times out, and then you got to resign. Security features. So we can move forward. Yeah. Okay. Did, Ms. Did, were you able to get on? Yeah, I signed in again. That's the third time. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so. <coughs> I, I, I'll explain okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's see if we can get. He's in. Yeah. Let's see if we get Mr. Up to grow in. He's in. Okay. All right. So um, Mrs. Deeroff has a question. What are the all? When we have alternates on here, we have base alternates and miscellaneous. So if you could just give us a brief yes. explanation. So of that. so base. What the base was is what the contract was for the previous three years, which was the high school, the Ed Center, Colebrookdale, and. Uh, where I work, the maintenance building. Okay, those four properties. The alternates are Boyer Town Elementary and Middle School West. I wanted to see what it would cost to include those two properties in with this pricing. And then the miscellaneous that you see is for mulching, leaf cleanup, bush trimming, tree trimming, and weeding. Okay, because the previous three years, all we had was cut, trim, and blow the grass off. That's all that was being done. And so all the other things that go along with land care uh, were being done by the existing ground crew, um, including uh, a fellow over at Boyertown and Middle School West uh, having to handle that pretty much on his own. So, any other questions for Mr. Drescher, uh, Mr. Brook? Uh, uh, one question. I'm looking at the numbers. They're they're so scattered, and I know you uh -huh. said you talked to each one. Because to me, if I looked at this, I'm, I'm I'm saying they didn't read the RFP all the same. Well, it, it's just they couldn't have had these numbers this far off from each other. Well, and I and I will tell you, I called each contractor and I asked them, "Did you visit the site? Did you read the RFP correctly?" and even ask them about their alternates and the mulching part of it because those numbers were so far off as well. Um, and everyone has assured me that, you know, they, they have done their homework on this. Did, did you have, 
Did you have a bidders conference or conference where you brought yes, them all I, in? Yes, I pretty did much I pretty much talked to every I mean, each one community? of these guys. There was a couple of folks that didn't even bother to come out. Okay, so they did come and visit the site. So they were yes. aware of yes. so which, which ones didn't come. Uh, no, all of these folks were here. Oh, all who came. Okay. All these folks were here. There was two folks who were not bidding that didn't didn't come. They were on my list to call and invite to bid, or give us some numbers, but they they never showed up. Um, one other, for the benefit of the of the board people who were not on the board when we first entered into this contract. Um, do you have do you have the history of how we ended up having to get additional people to do our landscaping? The the history I have is back in 2012 there was a grounds folk, or um, I keep saying folk. Uh, there was a grounds person <laughs> over at Middle School West to take care of Middle School West. There was a grounds person over at uh, Bordertown Elementary to take care of Bordertown Elementary, and there was three people over here at the high school. The fella over at Middle School West in 2012 retired. They did not replace him. It was a cost-cutting initiative, money-saving thing. They had the middle or the elementary school person attack the middle school as well as the elementary school, along with help from the folks at the high school. So there was there was some bartering going on there. They'd help out over there. He'd come over and help out at the high school, and then. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what year it is. Uh, I want to say four or five years ago, a, a fella from the high school retired. And when he retired, the idea was we're not going to replace him. We're going to take the money that we were paying that gentleman and use that towards paying for the land care. Um, I haven't gotten the real numbers because you know his salary is one thing but you have benefits and everything that are attached to that so it's, it's it's a much more significant number so I really the reason I did the alternates was to see where all these costs line up with the actual cost of that person who was never replaced to see if we're getting dollar for dollar and and trying to recognize what's being done out there and what we're trying to do because every time we do an addition every time we like when the ninth grade moved up to the high school there there's additional things that came with that and there was no staff at it um, you know it, it's hard to explain and understand unless you you're living it and you see it each and every day um, but it was my understanding not so much the guy from 2012, because my understanding was that was a cost-cutting initiative. But this most recent guy that was retired and not replaced, his salary was to supplement this contract. And so I couldn't tell you by guessing, I would say the number that we were paying and the number that the numbers that we have now would, in my opinion, be significantly less than what we're going to pay these folks. Or these folks is significantly less than what we were paying the employee. I'm sorry. When you say the numbers, which um, setup numbers are you talking of? Uh, the, either the previous three years, which was slightly higher than the most recent low bid, which was, I believe, 52. But I mean, are we speaking of like the numbers just for the base or for yes, all Yes, just three? for the base. Just, just for, for the, the base. base. Yes. That's why I added the alternates to see, you know, is it is it close to what the actual salary was of the guy who retired? Because the base number, in my opinion, is is not what his salary and benefits would have added up to. That's just based on my experience. And then um, for your staff, how... Um, thinly spread are they? Um, part of the problem is, and, and, and I say problem because for me, I never had this issue where I came from. We have individuals who are labeled as half custodian, half grounds. So they are made to work at a building such as Washington, okay? Excuse me. Uh, there's an individual there that is dedicated to putting four hours into the grounds work. That means four hours a day, 
five days a week, 20 hours, half his time, uh, is dedicated to mowing grass, cleaning leaves, trimming trees, weeding, mulching, uh, cleaning up leaves, um, you know, cutting grass. All that stuff has to be done in 20 hours every week, rain or shine. The other half of the time, he's in the building doing custodial work. Um, can it be done? Yeah, but when you're when you're limited in the, in the amount of time you have in a week, let's say it rains three days out of the week, and he can't get out there except for two days. Now he's in the building for three days, working three days inside the building because there's nothing really for him to do outside. And now he has to try and complete in two days what it should take him 20 hours. So it's a very it's a very fine line. It's very difficult to navigate and micromanage, if you will, uh, that kind of work, as opposed to having a grounds crew that that's what they do. They do grounds. They cut grass. They trim trees. They all these things I just spoke about. And custodians, they clean buildings. They help each other out from time to time. If there's an event, the grounds crew go over and help the the guys set up for an event at the middle school or the high school or one of the elementary schools for all that matters. Um, and maybe the, cust uh, the custodian guys come out and help uh, the, the, the grounds crew during the summer to help do some tree trimming around the whole campus and they knock it out in two days. That, that seems more doable to me than, than the way it's currently set up. And we have that situation, it's not in every building, but in most buildings. I have two questions. First is, uh, do we currently have um, open vacancies in the um, facilities and maintenance and custodial staff? We have, yes, we do. Uh, one custodial position, uh, I believe it's third shift at the high school. And right now we're short staffed on grounds because we have a fella out with an injury. <coughs> He's just went on workman's comp. So, uh, that along with, we, I, I hate to use the age thing, but we have an aging workforce. We, we, we have some employees in excess of 70 years old. And my father was 77 and, and God rest his soul when he died. He worked till the day he died. He, he was, a, he was a, a mule. He just couldn't sit still. And I'm kind of the same way, <laughs> unfortunately. But you can't expect people of, people of that age to do the things that people my age do. It's just, you just, you just can't do it. It's impossible. Uh, my, my other question is the, um, the cost increase for uh, knowing that we're, we're not, um, identifying one of these right now as a, a recommended option to go forward. But in general, the increases from year to year, how do they track compared to uh, wage uh, salary and benefit increases? I didn't really analyze that, to be honest with you. But just looking at it, I would say it's pretty consistent. Yeah, that was my, my sense looking at it, but I figured I'd ask. Yeah. Uh, my, my rule of thumb is two to five percent, depending on what the commodity is involved and and the actual labor that's being done. That's a, that's a pretty good number. The uh, don't we have a man that just mows? That gentleman is a part timer. Yeah. Yes. During so, the summer. Right. Yes, he runs a a big deck mower. Uh, where does where also, is he mow? He tries to tackle all the large areas um, in the district. Like he'll, he'll literally go from one building to another with this machine. Uh, and I'm not sure what, I know he's up there in age as well. You have these broken down by schools. Is that for your base price? Those figures? Uh, Mrs. Deroff, the, the ones that are in the base are the 
is Colebrookdale Elementary, the Education Center, Support Services, right. and the high school. And then the two, it, it, you'll, he didn't have base on the top, but if you look down below, then you'll see alternates. Right. That's Boyertown Elementary, Middle School West. And then he had also the, the additional services that's what's at the does that make sense so yes, then my, those were summarized on that first page right my question is since they're broken down and they bid per school area or whatever must you give the contract to one person for everything or can you i can because it's an rfp i can dish this out however we deem to be the best way to do it because i mean some of them are double yeah yeah there, there, there's one contractor <laughs> Well, even even the one we had before, some of those prices are are high. Like twenty seven for Middle School West. I know it's an alternate, but it's double for. Well, one thing you need to consider, and, and I know this because uh, I had three contractors doing the previous property I worked at, and that's what I needed to get the entire properties done. Uh, there wasn't one contractor that could handle it all. Uh, with time constraints and money constraints. So they have all different types of equipment that they, they purchase to have these landscaping companies. Right. I can't speak for them, but my cousin does own a landscaping business and they own all different types of equipment. Some of this newer equipment now will go 30 to 35 miles an hour and cut grass and turn on a dime. Some of the older stuff, you're lucky if you can go five miles an hour in fifth year. And so a lot of it has to do with, are they running new equipment or are they running old equipment? Are they, are they in a budget year where they have to buy new equipment? I, I can't speak to their numbers and why they have their numbers where they're at. I really can't. And every campus is different as well. We have some steep slopes out there on these properties. Right. We have some really wet areas out there on these properties. Uh, there's a lot of things that can manipulate these numbers from one opinion to the next. Are most of these uh, local, fairly local? There are two, two local folks, and the other three are from up north. So do we select who we were sending them to, or we just put it I, out? I picked some folks that I've worked with before. Landcare was the previous um, contractor that was here. And then there was four local ones that I hand picked cards from local restaurants here. And out of the four, two of them are on that list, that are on that bidding sheet. So we don't like put it in the paper and let anybody just bid on it. We, we no, like give. No, I, it was not advertised. No. Yeah. Um, I forgot my question. Let somebody else go. I'll think of it. Mr. Foos? <clears throat> um, I don't know if he has enough information to weigh in, but I was curious if our uh, resident landscaper had any input or thoughts on the, uh, um, the bids that we received or any of the organizations that provided bids. Yes, that would be helpful. If, do you have anything, Mr. Hemingway, since this is your area of expertise? I don't do maintenance, to be honest. Uh, I haven't cut, I don't cut my own grass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that answers that question. So that would be a no. That would be a, that would be a no. But you were helpful with the double cut thing the other day, so thank you for that. Uh, I mean, if, if, if you need a comment, it is each landscaper has their own interpretation of the site, so you're going to have extremes in cost. Um, one comment I had, and I, I kind of would stray away from the suggestion, but something to explore. Have there any considerations been for part-time seasonal work if we were to keep it in-house? Or that's most likely a, a, a nightmare in itself. I'm all, Honestly, I'm all for is letting the professionals do what they need to do, but you know, is that an area that we should at least take a look at, or has it already been? It's your show. Uh, it's, is you know, if you decide no, I'm good with you just saying no. Well, uh, something that's on on the back of my mind. I've been here seven months, almost eight months now. So, 
uh, I come from a completely different world. I have some things in the back of my head, and this is just one of the steps of me reconciling what I'm thinking about. Forward, and I'm not ready to present anything or discuss it outside of. Mrs. Dare, if you short answer is yes. <laughs> now I remember my question. In the RFPs, you had it. We it was in there about a second cut if it needed it, mm -hmm. uh, and then it, later on it said about four cuts a month. Yeah, it was very so 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 the double me. cut. Okay, and he can probably this is what he was speaking about. Right. Uh, double cuts are when it rains. Right. You, you try to cut the grass and it just lays down, and so. You know, the sun comes out the next day and the grass stands back up and it looks like it wasn't even that, cut. But there was no monetary amount there. Right, because there I'm not paying them to double cut. Okay. And then you'll make sure they're cut in time for the games and all so that we don't have to, like we had been doing last year, go back and our own people See, cutting this the is, grass. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but this is one of the concerns I have that I've gotten from people that work for us, is that there, there were some issues with the the previous guy yeah and right. so the double cut though let me just get back to that double cut me if it rains for two weeks the grass still needs to be cut so you, you sometimes you have to cut it twice to get it flat so that when the Sun comes out it looks like it was cut and it's shorter otherwise it just lays down the Sun comes out it stands back up and it and yeah you can see tire tracks but you the, the grass isn't cut Oh, if it rains continuously for two weeks, they won't be here cutting grass. To start with. <laughs> so that doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Mr. Hemingway. Whatever. Well, just to add more on the double cut, that's really the landscaper's discretion of how he wants his product to look at the end, which then brings on that if it's not acceptable, he's going to get a phone call. And no, nobody likes to get that phone call that the job isn't correct. So a double cut really is a... a a professional landscaper is going to know what is uh, double cut might not need to do the whole area it might just be a section um, so again that's at the discretion of the professional and most of them the the, the idea is, is to have a good product in the end so but that is at their discretion unless he calls them and says now you come back okay so there's no way that the double cut is ever construed as one of the four cuts for the month then. <laughs> that's that's just want to make sure that's no. not a contractual, why, a contractual if, trap. If you if you read the specifics, in, it says that it's expected to be 28 cuts, but it could be as little as 26 or as much as 36. If there's no definitive number. The the payout that you see is what they're going to. That's how they're going to build it. Mm -hmm. they, if they cut it twice in one week, they're building a. That, that was my only concern when I read one part of the contract. It's we're, you know, we're double cuts required. I read another part of the contract. It says four cuts a month. So, in contract language, that's they're opposite of each other. For, so. for, for their for their accountant, that's revenue stream. They they can count on that revenue stream. It doesn't matter how many times they come down. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, just one one other question I had. I know that you said that. Um, we know a little bit about land care because we've had them. So have, have you had an opportunity to call um, or do they even give references? Yes. Uh, I did speak with John, who is the, the representative that I spoke with. Uh, I do have their previous uh, list of references that uh, for work. Uh, I will ask whoever the winner of this is to, to buy the same thing, reference check. Um, I, I most likely will be calling Landcare to calling some of the... Okay, so just to kind of wrap, wrap this up, at this point, what you're telling this committee is at this time you do not have a recommendation for a company because you still have some more research to do. Okay. And, and, and also, I need to do it quickly because the growing season is quickly approaching. Well, <laughs> so and I think this I don't is. I want these guys to schedule their right. books up and now we don't have a place in their book. Right. And I think this is something that we probably 
and I don't know if it's going to be doable, but it's something that we would want to put on our next I, I voting would, meeting? I, I would yes, I, okay, I so think you will have that information. That would, Mr. Drescher's recommendation will go into the newsletter and then we'll, of course, ask you if you have any more questions um, based on his recommendation and then that would be, and I would say since we are not making a recommend, and, and Dr. Ben can disagree with me on this, but um, since we are not making a recommendation at this point that instead of going on the consent agenda, it should probably go on the itemized agenda. I would agree with that. I would think that that's going to have to be that if we're not going to have a consensus tonight. And Mr. Ruptico, before we move on, go ahead. I just wanted to say if we did pick and choose, we could do it for $42,598 a month. I mean a season <laughs> a month. That's it, for the first first year. I just did it roughly instead of in the 50s. To grab and then Mr. Hemingway wants to say. You still have it. But Charlie, could you send the bids out and get rebids again? Because I think these bids are all over the place. Uh, I'm I'm not in a position to do that. I really am not. Um, only because of the the time constraints we're under right now. If I don't get somebody in, where where where? Madam President, I think we need to be clear that these were not a bid process. So that's the difference, and I think that's why I think um, maybe Mr. Upgrow has some concern, and someone asked about advertising. Yes, Mrs. Gerard Right, the because an RFP doesn't necessarily require advertisement, so I want to make sure everybody understands that, that process. And I think that's what he stated up front, that it was an RFP process, uh, then there's a difference uh, in that. <clears throat> so, you know, I guess the other question would be, um, are there others that would have to capture the two questions if we had just publicized it? Will we have gotten any more responses in your? Because I understand last time there were not a lot of responses. Yes. It, 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 that, that is my understanding after talking with my supervisor and looking at the file folder for all the bids that were taken in for land. Other bids besides land care. So just for clarification, and that, was a, that, and that was a bid process. So that okay, that's what I was going to ask. So that was an actual bid yeah. process. Okay. So, uh, just to be clear, so can these be separated out by individual, like like Colbrookdale, uh, as an individual item, and the uh, support services building as an individual item, or are they all included in what's the base? These were bid, or I hate to keep using that word, but the proposals were put together based on the bid, the base bid, uh -huh. the alternates, and, and uh, the leading and stuff. Okay, so. That's how it was put together. If I go back to these contractors and say, hey, Will you do this building? Will right. you do that building? And you do this one? They're all going to look at me and laugh and walk right. away. Right. Okay. So it, so it, so when we say that they that they bid on the so like to take land care for example. So like they look they did this put this together based on the base which would be Colbertdale Ed Center Support Service Town High School. Yes. So they wouldn't come and do support services for just a hundred dollars. No. So they they I w imagine broke out their bidding in a way that they had a number in mind and. They put the leftover there. Yeah. Okay. Because, I just wanted to be clear. Because, so with land care, you know, every, we'll everybody not that's mow involved here knows support that services for one hundred and two dollars. The bulk of that property is going to be under construction, except okay. for the front of the road. Good chances of that anyway. And so when they put their numbers to this, they say, well, okay. I just wanted clarification on that. Yeah. Thank you. Again, I, I can't I can't speak to how the contractors put their numbers to this, but I can tell you this is a pretty good mix of numbers. I know there's a big disparity between them, but this is not uncommon. I, 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 I'm just telling you, it's not uncommon. So just to clarify, um, Mrs. Deeroff had, had an observation that if you, if you kind of combine different companies um, and, the, and took the lowest it took the lowest bids with the different schools, right? Um, you could you could come up with a much with a lower number. And what I'm hearing from you is that 
that's not realistic. It's not realistic and because it's not realistic in that we didn't ask him to put a, a proposal together that way. We asked him to put a package together for these four buildings, these two extra buildings, one each separately, and then the extras. I just wanted to click. Yeah. All right. Any other comments about this? So, we'll, so um, we will have, just to kind of wrap this up, we will have information in our newsletter as much information as you can give us. Hopefully you will have a recommendation and you will have your reasoning behind the recommendation and we will be putting that on the agenda itemized at the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Item is our auditing services quote. Explain. So at the February Finance Facilities and Operations Committee meeting, I did present an, an option to go out for auditing services, quote, with our current um, auditors, Barbara Kane Thornton, and my recommendation at that time had been to get a two-year quote from them. With my transition for this year, um, it, it, there's some continuity with the auditors that already know us, and, and a new CFO is not having to contend um, with uh, auditors who are unfamiliar with our books. And that that time I did also recommend um, for the second year just so that that CF, new CFO will have an, some experience under their belt um, and, and can be working um, and, and getting up to speed on everything and then we can start considering whether we want to go out for an audit RFP. Um, I believe that this would bring these auditors through six years and our discussion at the meeting um, in February was that we could go ahead and seek a quote from Barbara Kane for the next two years so the year ending June 30th 2020 and the year ending June 30th 2021 so you can see in our agenda item the quote that they got there I do want to point out one thing that is if you look like it does look like there's a fairly large jump um, between the 20 20 year and the 2021 year uh, we this it does include um, tax collector audits and we do three tax collectors for two years in a row and because we have 10 tax collectors on that third year we are doing four tax collectors so that that last year here they would be doing four tax collector audits so I would recommend um, based on the quote that they gave us that we would move this item forward um, to the consent agenda for the March voting meeting and, and that's it any questions or comments about this no okay none is there anybody who was opposed to moving this forward nope okay great can move that forward and our last item is a 2020-2021 budget update. I do want to point out, because um, I know Mrs. Deroff had this question last time, that we do try to keep our uh, presentation kind of as a running presentation. So the previous two presentations are at the beginning of this. And that's so if anybody's looking at anything here, that the information is all in one area. They don't have to look at the January meeting. They don't have to look at the February meeting. So we're not going to review the things that we've looked at previously. We are going to start on slide 22. So I'll let everybody get there while I put on slideshow. And Karen, you need to make sure that it's, they're still showing the draft version, which is not a draft anymore, when you can um, watermark, make sure you take it off at some so point. The watermark, so I did take it off on my presentation. I did not take it off on the, uh, but I can take that off. So um, we'll take the draft off um, and you'll probably see one of those notifications that there was something changed in the meeting, but we'll take that draft watermark off um, in, in the actual agenda. All right. So one of the things I want to point out, this is where we stand right now. Um, you'll s notice that previously we had a section for what our tax, or what our deficit would look like if we had no tax increase. And then we had an area where we would, what our deficit would look like if we went up to the Adjusted Act 1 index. And then we were estimating until last meeting that we would be eligible for exceptions. And we did find out in February that we are not eligible for exceptions. So I do want to point out that you're not, not seeing those three sections anymore because we did eliminate um, the exceptions portion. Um, 
the deficit unfortunately has grown a little bit as we continue to evaluate um, what what we have in there to make sure that we are accounting for everything. Um, the deficit with the adjusted act one index at the february presentation was 1.4 million in the meantime i discovered that when i took the um, teachers and pulled them out of the live database to model them for the 2021 budget that that was previous to their column movement and that was very important for us to address and make sure that we included that so that is part of that increase we also um, have two sabbaticals that we need to account for their long-term subs, as well as we went through a very detailed um, reconciliation of all of those people that we have placed um, from Pine Forge primarily and making sure that all of our staff has a placement. We've gone through that um, in very de much detail with, with the cabinet members. Um, so that was um, part of the adjustment there. We were also very fortunate as we saw earlier um, that our um, BCTC budget came in less than not only this year, but I had um, increased the budget being conservative when I put the initial number in for BCTC. So savings that we had for BCTC were definitely able to mitigate that, that deficit growth. So that's good news. Um, so in addition to those changes, um, eliminating the exceptions, um, we also have received the assessments for Montgomery and Berks County. Probably everybody here has received their county and municipal tax bill. So this is based on the assessment that is done by the counties in January, February timeframe for them to issue their tax bills. It didn't increase significantly, but it did increase the tax revenue that was generated by that Act 1 index by about $20,000. In addition, when you have more wages, um, you also get a more subsidy for your retirement and your social security from the state. So that did add also, in addition to adding the some expenditures, it also added some revenue as well. So this is where we stand with what's in the budget today. So I do have a comparison of uh, where we are for from the preliminary budget compared to where we were on the budget that I finalized last week. Um, and you'll see that large decrease in the real estate taxes and that represents um, the amount that was eliminated by taking out the exceptions that we had in the initial budget. And we had already seen the other local revenue of 200,000. That is where I had increased the earned income tax based on our projection. Um, and I will say that Ms. Clauser um, actually still is very interested in Boyertown and she had seen my projection and I felt very good um, my projection for this year and she had done some analysis on our real uh, on our earned income tax um, projection for this year and she was very much um, in alignment with the projection that I had made so that gave me some confidence um, on that now we, we do have to with the changes that are going on in our co economy we do need to be sensitive and keep our eyes on the trends of what's going on with that as well um, the state revenue again as had gone up and that was tied to that um, primarily tied to the subsidy that we receive for Social Security and retirement for the wages. Um, the federal revenue, I think um, we took a look at um, where our um, our staff is for our Title I. So it was primarily due to changes in our title program. And I think honestly, and I should have looked, but um, it had gone up last time and we had to make a little bit, uh, um, actually I think it went down more. It, that, that change was like negative 60 before, now it's negative 27. So it did go up from the last one, but we had made an adjustment um, previously to the preliminary budget. I hope that makes sense. So these are our areas um, for, our, for our expenditures by object, and object tells us what we are spending our money on. We talk about this occasionally. Functions are what programs we're pro um, supporting, but the objects tell us what we are paying for. So the salaries and the benefits based on the preliminary budget have gone up, and that it was primarily due to those things, three things that I mentioned, the column movement, um, the sabbaticals, and making sure that we reconciled for all the placements that we have made. Um, 
and the purchase services where it went down from the preliminary budget at, that is primarily tied to that money that we were able to decrease in the budget based on our BCTC, the numbers that we got that we know for the general program, as well as the adjustment that I had mentioned that we had made for our occupational uh, program that our special ed students go to. Um, so that is where we stand with expenditures. Um, one of the things we had been talking about was areas where we had made some reductions previously. Um, so we wanted to tie some numbers to those um, that we have looked at. So this, I, we were hoping to get this on one page, um, and I had done that originally, um, but it really kind of was squished. So I, I broke it out into two sections. So before you even saw a preliminary budget, we had done a lot of work in December and January. Um, we received budgets from our, our buildings and our departments. Um, and then when those numbers came back, we took a really good hard look at what was already in there and we looked for areas where we could reduce. So one of the first things was um, I had based the n initial um, transfer to the internal service based on what we had done this year. And Mr. Ionelli has done a lot of work on changing the type of equipment that we are using for our students. And that should provide some savings in the transfer that we will be making to the internal service for the leases for those equipment for that equipment. We also took a look at charter schools and based on trends from what was originally initially before you even saw the budget, we were able to make a $110,000 um, uh, reduction. There had been a security van that was requested. We determined that at this point with the budget uh, challenges that we have, that that was not something that we would be wanting to put in the 2021 budget. Um, I asked uh, Mr. Palladino to take a good look at his his budget and he was able to um, make some adjustments and give us some uh, $10,000 savings. Um, we also looked at some special ed um, tuition reduction and I um, they really looked at their numbers hard and their projections and they were able to make some reductions there. Um, the same um, situation that I had with with the athletic department we did reach out to information services and um, Mr. Drescher and facilities and they were also able to um, make some refinements to their budgets which you see listed there. Um, initially we had requested a staff nurse um, and before that even came to the preliminary budget we did eliminate that as well as reducing some of the contracted guidance that we um, had put when we were first doing our work. Um, we, we have done some staff reductions um, in um, so that is it's sort of a total um, number right there and part of that um, no, that is not right. I have the Prime Forges listed out separately. Um, so we did have some retirement savings in that very first um, preliminary budget that we presented in January, and you see that. And we've also made some program modifications and restructuring. So before we even came um, to the preliminary budget, you can see that we did a lot of work in reducing what was there. And those are the numbers that we tied. And just a real brief overview of some of the areas. Um, in the meantime, even though I had those adjustments that I needed to make that we mentioned earlier, we did continue to look at areas for savings um, since the preliminary budget. Um, we had mentioned last time that we did have some favorable results for what we think our insurance rates are going to be the projection right now. So I had made an adjustment from 8% that we had originally budgeted down to 5%, and that is what the, the number that you see there for the savings. We had a little bit more retirement savings that came after the preliminary budget was presented and had continued to do some program modifications and restructuring. And there was an additional way that we placed um, placed one of our Pine Forge employees, which um, generated some more savings. Um, we had additional um, a tenth of an FTE reduction, which you see there. Um, and um, Mr. Stout has been able to move some textbook purchases that he had initially planned for the 2021 year into this year. So we'll be purchasing some textbooks this year that had initially been in the um, 
2021 budget. The BCTC savings, um, and that is the two pieces between what we have in the savings in the general program and the special occupational program. Um, in addition, um, because of the initiatives that we wanted to do with the SEALs, um, we reached out to our principals, and that is a program that they really fully support, and we asked them what we have is a per pupil allocation so based on the projected enrollment for their building and whether they are an elementary or secondary school they are given an allocation to budget for their building so what we've done in order to help um, fund the seal positions is ask for them to take a 10 percent reduction on their pup per pupil allocation and that is the number that you see there um, most it was about 50-50 split. I had given them the option to tell me which line items they would like to have their reduction in, um, and most of them did give me that. Um, I did tell them if they didn't respond to me by a particular date that I would take it from their school-wide supplies and if that wasn't sufficient from their principal accounts. So um, I, we had really good support from the principals for that reduction for those positions. And in addition, the textbook um, reduction was also uh, in in support of the seal positions so those are the reductions that we have worked on making so um, we do know that we still have some more work to do um, we definitely would like to get that deficit under a million dollars and we continue we've talked about some of these before but we do have areas where we are continuing to evaluate and look at reduction we do anticipate that the final health insurance rate will be less than a five percent increase um, but that is something that we have to continue to evaluate um, final staffing we s most certainly could have some additional retirements um, possibly some um, people who might be leaving us where we might be able to replace them with somebody at a lower salary. So we're going to continue to evaluate how our staff um, is, is um, changing. And that goes along with the, the vacancy and turnover savings. Um, there may be some additional program modifications, um, and we are, and maybe Dr. Bedden may want to touch on this one a little bit more, but he had mentioned at the previous meeting that we are continuing to evaluate how we are doing our transportation with our stops and consolidating. So we are looking at that as an area to do some additional savings. Am I capturing that correctly, Dr. Bedden? Okay. So um, that is where we stand. We still have work to do, obviously, um, but we wanted to give you an update of where we stand today. It was an important uh, to try. Now that list on page uh, 27 is really more so the big ticket items uh, to give you a snapshot. There are other nitpicky things, so it's numbers are probably a little bit higher. Uh, but as you know that I've said for new board members, but the original board members that when I saw the budgetary challenges, our deficits when I got here were bigger than this. And that we couldn't tax our way out of this and we couldn't cut our way out of this without killing our programs. So we continue, at least the, the methodology is a combination approach of, of, I consider trying to say partnership because costs do go up no matter what. Gas goes up, electric goes up. Uh, so we're not immune to that as a school system, but we also try to show what are we doing differently in-house uh, rather than just saying give me more money and and so as you deal with your constituents we always try to give you a, an example of how we've been trying to tighten our belt uh, and, and again she mentioned I, I do hope knock on wood that that uh, you know she, Carol always asks why am I don't why I don't seem too stressed or worried um, you know 17 years and you do this up and down roller coaster with with money uh that I, you know unless something doesn't hold I'm, I'm comfortable believing that we will still accomplish the goal as i did last year uh, of using uh you know th that goal of a hundred million of our fund balance because uh, coming in i shared with the board that we can't draw the money down at the clip that we were drawing it down that we need uh, uh to slow to drain while we rebuild our base uh to meet uh our needs in the district and that's what we're trying to do with that uh, it is my hope that some of those additional areas uh, that have been identified that we're still waiting on again we can't give you a number yet because we got to get farther into the year uh, with the final numbers of health care and hopefully nothing catastrophic happens to throw that off uh, the final staffing uh, number uh, I do not anticipate the same 
savings from vacancy turnover savings that we had um, last year because we're more stable uh, again this year uh, but we have had some vacancies so you capture money through that process uh, again that's one time but you're that's money that we can actually pay back uh, into the fund balance uh, if we uh, whatever we use uh, and again we keep looking for uh, program modifications and, and efficiency so for example the textbooks was one that when we looked at what was being left here uh, Mr. Stout was able to buy them now so it's not that the kids are not getting textbooks <laughs> he's buying it now rather than waiting till next year based on money that he was able to identify that's still available now so don't anybody think that they're not getting those resources um, at this point in time uh, we did as you saw um, implement uh, what we call a more we don't technically say a freeze because that's misleading because there's certain things you've still got to buy we can't get around it uh, but we do put in a much more stringent review process and approval of what's expended so we slow the spending uh, which will hopefully capture some savings from this year that we'll be able to use uh, uh, going forward or trigger purchases now for next year that we'll be able to pull out of next year's budget. Uh, so what you got when you saw that communication, uh, we don't use the word freeze. This restrictive spending is what we call it. Uh, so we scrutinize and take away the school's ability without approval uh, to buy things. But there's certain things we can't just say we're not going to do. Uh, so that's what that means. Uh, and again, I just hope you, you know, uh, you know, uh, the police, one of the police chiefs was in uh, the other day and then someone else uh, from a township uh, and a business owner talking about our stops and how many we have and if you ever get caught behind a bus they can't believe how many places we stop. Um, it's a little bit excessive and but all of that has time issues when you say you want a shorter ride. It has cost factors with the bus uh, burning gasoline and fuel um, and some of our are just out of convenience and, and as long as you're not a safety issue we need to be, to be okay with making some modifications that will help our drivers get from point A to point B in a timely manner. So I just um, thank you Dr. Bedden and thank you Mrs. Pitts for all your hard work on this budget and I just wanted to um, just make one observation and mainly it's it's for the community because when I'm out in the community and talking to people um, I hear quite often that, well, Boyertown has this, you know, deficit all the time and they're always looking to make cuts, but yet you're building a seven million, you know, seven million dollar stadium. And um, I just want to reiterate that we're not building a seven million dollar stadium. We're building a, um, a maintenance building, a softball field, so we don't get into hundreds and thousands of dollars in litigation over Title IX. We are uh, getting up to code with uh, with our stadium and our bathrooms and a concession stand so that is that is necessary for this community and I have been on this board for seven years now and um, have been hearing from the time I got on that we needed to do something about the stadium we need to do something about the stadium and um, we we tried to piecemeal it because we were trying to be fiscally responsible and we are where we are but when we look at that big pie chart, um, on, it's on page five of, of 28 on the presentation. If you look at our debt service, our debt service is $6,116,734, which is 5% of our budget. 5% of our budget. So I just want to put that in perspective that uh, I think from the time I have been on this board, we have tried to be very fiscally responsible, and we have had tried to look at where we can make uh, as many cuts as we can. And there is much more that we cannot control than we can control. So again, I just want to um, make that make that point because when I'm out in the community, I hear that, and I do try to explain it to people. But uh, I know people do tune in to to school board meetings, and I think it's a it's a good opportunity to reiterate that. And again, uh, I think that uh, kudos goes to the administration for all the hard work that they've done in trying to make sure that. Uh, we are spending our dollars as wisely as we can. Comments, Mrs. Dira. Talking about the stadium, I just want to check with administration to make sure that we are checking into the maintenance at Bear Stadium. 
we have a contract that we have to adhere to and I just want to make sure that we're doing our part on the contract because we have a lot of new people in the district and I didn't want that to get lost. Because I asked about it before and I, I was told they're looking at it. Uh, we, yearly, we I sit down with representatives of, representatives of the Legion. We look at the contract. Uh, based upon the the status of where the American Legion is at with um, their revenues and expenditures, we end up taking on more and more every year to um, maintain the stadium, whether it comes to more mowing, um, the uh, fertilization, weed control, um, and just the day-to-day -day maintenance of, say, painting things, um, taking care of the um, ticket stand, things of that nature. We, we've been taking on more and more of that in conjunction with them because they simply don't have the, the, the manpower they did back in the 80s and 90s when, they, when that stadium was, was erected. So we're not letting it get in disarray like we did the stadium? A any problems that we're finding? that's being brought to the attention of of uh, facilities and grounds we're, we're not in that we're nowhere near in the stage that we were in memorial stadium right now okay but i don't want to get there either neither do i thank you mr yeah talking to the people that i know the um the stadium um uh, being so it's going to cost so much to replace it was basically because it wasn't maintained and we can't lose thought of that that the money didn't want to be spent on it at that time because there were other projects going but then this project here is now going to cost a lot of money and it was all about maintenance uh, looking at the debt service interest rates have dropped fairly deep in the last several months last few months is there anything that we're looking at that we can refinance um, I think I, yeah it was before your time and we did just refinance two issues in November right before you started um, so we do have a financial advisor who does keep an eye on that and you do have to remember that in addition to rates um, dropping there are closing costs that we have to consider so I can reach out to him um, to see if he they're usually really good about keeping an eye on that for us but I <laughs> Mrs. Giroff is smiling um, but I can I can reach out to Mr. Remick and see um, if he sees any other opportunities for us that this time so I will do that this week yeah, thank you. Just like let's just like keep on top of that as because right now the interest rate interest rates are fluid, and it's a good time to take care of them. I know some of the changes don't apply to commercial, but you can it still doesn't hurt to look. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, I think that was just an update. Correct. So there's no action that we need for that. So um, we'll go next to committee comment. Does anybody have any additional comments? No? All righty. And um, upcoming meeting dates, basically our schedule now is every Tuesday. Um, and the last Tuesday is typically our actual voting meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you have the reminder? Go ahead. I just want to make sure, because of uh, one question I received, uh, to make sure you understand that there were several hold dates called special meetings so that if there was work that needed to be done additionally with the board, it was easier to have those scheduled than to run around and scrambling for people's schedule. Um, the last two Thursdays, uh, we did not get response, which is fine, but I want to make sure everyone remembers because uh, one member wasn't sure because uh, we didn't have it. Uh, so again, when we send out a notice, please make sure that uh, if there's a concern or desire, we're looking for consensus or whether we need to work with it, the individual directly. But those are planned as additional meetings that are off the Tuesdays. Um, because of when I first got here, there was a lot of trying to get things done and we spent a lot of time trying to figure out whose schedules matched up with what. Um, so if anyone is not sure, I can send a, another, uh, a board calendar. It's on the 
website, but I can send it to you directly so you can see those additional special meetings uh, that we um, laid out that weren't required, but they were kind of like hold spots. Uh, and again, I'm not no, um, suggesting uh, we need to gather more, <laughs> uh, but want to make sure everyone understands that if they don't have it, I can send it out again so they can see when they are. Um, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn then? Mr. Foos, second. Mrs. Deroff, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.